my 1880-ish Alexander Fleeg Hunter's Cuckoo Clock movement. In the last video, I, took, I was showing you that I had a movement in the case and the when I turn the hands, it wouldn't trip the movement or when I turn the hands, the uh, clock wouldn't stop cuckooing. Either way, it was because that second wire that I had to remake the the wire that c comes in and turns to 90 degrees that the w uh, wire that goes over the second wheel the one that's curved and has that tail on it that the third wheel with warning pin it lifts up that 90 degree wire to start the clock in action and uh, what was going on is whenever you turn the hands the clock wouldn't actually the wheels wouldn't stop when it was in warning and that's because that 90 degree lever was bent too close to the other lever so I had to um, separate them a little bit and now as I turn the hands if you watch the governor fan it will spin a little bit and it's now in warning it's not cuckooing and as the hands rotate more the wire that goes over the second wheel this wire right here, which is the first wire that I had to make because I broke it, it drops, which allows the third wheel warning pin, because currently the third wheel warning pin is is being stopped by the, the hump that goes over the second wheel from that wire. But as the hands move, it's now out of warning and it is allowed to cuckoo one more time for good measure going up on the hour the governor pan is fixing to go into warning it did right then um, the third wheel warning pin is being it's now underneath that brass lever but it's being stopped that brass lever right there that goes into the the cam's mouth but it's being stopped by the hump of that wire and so as the hands rotate it comes out of warning and cuckoos I still haven't found the other part of the cuckoo bird, but I haven't crawled on my hands and knees to look for it either. But I'm going to allow this thing to run probably overnight to make sure that it functions properly. I think in the last video when I was working on this clock, also told you that the uh, birch assembly moved on me. I got my thread lock in that I ordered. I put some thread lock on the uh, bridge of this birch assembly. And that should, it's, it's supposed to dry really well and be really strong. So uh, according to uh, the machinists that I talked to about this, a clock on a different occasion but anyway I brought it in here where I got this table set up got the B amplifier on it sounds pretty good and like I said I'm gonna let it run and the minute hand is turning and hopefully before too long you will see the uh, clock cuckoo 
we might have to wait about a minute. Uh, maybe I could talk about stuff during that time frame. Um, I really like this stand. Um, and my buddy likes it too. He, I think he wishes he would have kept it. But uh, as you can see, the uh, verge, the foot of the crutch assembly is spread apart. And you can see that wire, the, the pendulum leader wire just bouncing off and on the hand did turn and it did cuckoo and that was two o'clock that it was supposed to cuckoo so i'm gonna go mow my yard and uh hopefully it'll be on 2 30 3 o'clock by the time i get back but so far so good and i never did do a bucket test to see how much weight it takes i just grabbed some weights to put on this thing i think it needs a little bit more water than that now the true test is when i put the movement into the case and hook up the bellows to see how it sounds but so far it takes about 800 grams of weight which is typical for an antique 30-hour movement like this. It has been running for about four hours now without any issues whatsoever. And so uh, I'm going to probably go through the hands all the way around. Right now it's on 4 o'clock, I believe. Uh, 2, 3, 4, yeah, 4 o'clock. And so I'm going to go through the hands all the way around back to 4 o'clock as long as it functions as required I'm going to put the movement back in the case and that might be where I'm screwing up because I initially say you need to wait at least 12 hours because it has to go from 12 all the way back to 12 or 13 hours but um with the pendulum, it's been running fine with for four hours now. And so I'm going to, uh, I'm in a hurry. And that's probably where I keep screwing up. And so if I um, put it back in the case and it malfunctions, uh, next time around, I'm going to wait the full 24 hours. It should be uh, cuckooing any time now. It's about ready to hit the 430 mark. I will say that it's been running for more than four hours. But the hour pipe was too far forward, which was getting in a bind with something. And so the minute hand wasn't rotating. So once I pushed the hour pipe back, uh, the minute hand came back some, and uh, the minute hand's been turning. But for a good while, I had it on on five minutes till the hour, and that's where it stayed for 30, 45 minutes um, while I was outside. And that's because the hour pipe was too far forward. Um, preventing the minute hand from turning, preventing the wire from lifting. Uh, uh, the, that catches the one of two uh, pins on the minute shaft arbor. Um, anyway, I got that sorted out and and. Uh, I'm 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 ready for this thing to be done is what I am. I've been working on this thing since before December. You know, my health prevents me from doing a lot when I want. So I have to take the good days with the bad, I guess.
I apologize for it being dark, but my light bulb blew out and I don't want to uh, fix it because I don't want to fall through my floor. But with the current weight that I have on it, it's not enough. The cuckoo plays, but it don't play that well. And in that case, because I was messing around with the hands, it didn't work. So it needs a little bit more weight added to it. And that's why you do that bucket test. So about 850, 900 grams of weight, 1,000 gram weight, something like that. And with some more water added to it. No, it's not 12 o'clock. It's 7 o'clock. So now I need to weigh that water. It is 45 ounces, which is around... 1,275 grams of, uh, of weight. Uh, so that is what I'm going to put on it. 1,200 grams of weight. Like I had on it. So it's back in my stand. Got the beat amplifier on it. I'm going to let it run for... An hour at least to make sure it stays running and then um, hang it all back up. Back where it belongs, hanging on the wall. And it's been a while. There's the uh, hands that Justin made for me. I might have to put a, uh, a tapered washer on it. And again, I still need to find um, the rest of the cuckoo. But um, my neighbor's son is staying the night with me this weekend. So I'm going to let him look for it. So let's recap what was wrong with it. The wire that comes off the lever that is tripped by the minute hand um, with minute arbor center wheel, the one of the two pens, that wire that goes around and then comes over the second wheel and then has that tail on it. Originally, I cut that tail too short, but I discovered that tail for this particular clock, and not it's not for every clock, but the third wheel warning pin has to go underneath, sorry, has to go on top of that tail so the hump that is the hump that goes over the second wheel. The hump stops that third wheel with warning pen when it's in warning. And then I broke that wire, so I had to make another wire. And then the 90 degree wire that, that, um, that wire pushes on to start the cuckoo in motion, I broke that wire, so I had to make another one of those wires. But, um, and then I had to adjust 
that 90 degree wire from that wire that has a tail on it. It has to be adjusted just right in order for this clock to work properly. But anyway, it's up and running finally. Thank God. And um, if you are not a member of the two groups that I am the admin for, but you would like to become a member, on my YouTube channel, I have a video that talks about my groups. You have to answer all the questions or you will not be allowed in. And you have to answer them appropriate. Yes and no is not appropriate for some of the questions, such as where do you live? Uh, yes and no is not appropriate. We use those questions to welcome you into the groups. And so, uh, But anyway, the point I'm getting across is Justin is in both of my groups and he can carve you some bone hands for your antique clock so uh leave me some comments uh, give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe to my channel and please subscribe to all the channels that i'm going to leave in this video such as just mike michael anderson he does a really good job at repairing all kinds of clocks he does a good job at repairing all kinds of clocks, okay? I do not like working on battery-operated clocks. Just Mike is really good at working on battery-operated clocks and electric clocks. There are some electric clocks that I have around here that they are old. The wires are brittle. And I don't want to uh, take a chance at burning somebody's house down, especially mine. And then people like Torsion Dell, Derek. The man is 70 years old, and he shows you how to work on a torsion clock. Every month, I can look at my YouTube stats. And I have a couple of videos of me repairing an anniversary slash torsion clock. I have a few. That video, or one of those videos, is always top 10 of my most watched videos every month. So I don't understand why Derek, who does a better job at explaining things, who is a professional, uh, and I don't consider myself a professional, I can't make parts. Derek has a way that he can make parts. He, I gave him a clock. He made parts for it. He, um, that's what he does for income. But yet, per my request, he started a YouTube channel. And I have been doing everything I can to get him the subscribers. So please take this time to subscribe to his channel. He also shows you how to repair laves that he has and a few other things. But there's uh, people like... Uh, Clocks with Seth, uh, Seth Lingenfelter, who I purchased my shirts from, he does professional videos. Um, he, uh, my videos are not professional, his are. Uh, um, Adair's Repairs. Sorry, Adair's Repairs. Cheryl Adair, she is very good at explaining how to do things. She learns from watching my videos and other people's videos, and then she takes the time to do uh, repair her clocks, and, and I talked her into creating a YouTube channel. Um, support people's channels. It doesn't cost you anything. You can contribute to some people's YouTube channels. I have not set my YouTube channel up that way. I will not set my YouTube channel up that way. 
But I don't care whether people set their YouTube channels up that way. If that's what you want to do, uh, I don't care. I just, uh, I've always told people that I'm never going to charge them one dime for my knowledge. My experience, I, I'm not, I'm not an expert in clocks. I just have a lot of experience, as you can see, from going around the room and looking at my clocks. I have a lot of clocks, and I'm the only person that works on these clocks. I'm going to take that back. In my 25 years of collecting clocks, this clock right here I gave to my aunt. Um, I, I told her I wasn't smoking, she was, and she was having a lot of health issues. And I told her, if you quit smoking, I will give you this clock, because she loves this clock. Well, I had to pay because I was working seven days a week at the time away from my house, 200 or 300 miles a day, working both shoeing horses and, and so on. He was internet. I paid a local guy to work on this clock. I paid him $350 or $400. He said it was done. My aunt never saw this clock work. I had it ticking. Let me turn it around. I'm going to show you something. It's a Westminster Chime clock, okay? The pendulum that was on it wasn't a very good pendulum. She... I take that back. She made... Something, he, he started this pendulum, okay, but you couldn't adjust it. You could only adjust it to a certain point, and then it wasn't adjustable anymore. So, after my aunt passed and I got this clock back, I put these slots in it so you can uh, adjust the pendulum bob because there's only so much that this pendulum bob adjusts. It, it, it actually doesn't adjust down here. This is just decorative crap. So I added this, but I paid this guy. This guy is a professional, supposedly, local guy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything back to that guy. He charged my parents $50 to service a clock, a 31-day clock that my stepbrother gave to my mom many years ago. My dad had to wind the clock every day. It was a 31-day clock. He had to wind the clock every day after the, he got it back from this guy. And, and when I broke my ribs, I stayed with my parents for a month. And during that month's time span, I repaired the clock. The suspension spring was broken. It's got two um, springs on it that comes off the, the, the plastic. Anyway, the suspension spring was broken. Um, and it also had a worn out bushing. And so I, I, fixed it so they could use the clock and again I wouldn't take anything to this local guy it was the same guy that worked on a cuckoo clock for my sister's friend one of her best friends um, she paid a jewelry store $170 clock didn't even work a week He's the one that has a contract with that place. Um, I worked on the clock, and to my knowledge, the clock is still working today, and that was over three years ago. But as you can see, this clock is ticking away, and I haven't messed with it. This floor, because my dad flushed it, depends on my toilet. A beam broke underneath my house, and my floor, uh, my par part of my house sunk, 
And so my floor is no longer level, even though I hired my son-in-law to uh, to raise it up. He did a good job of raising it up. This used to be an inch separation. Now it's only uh, maybe a quarter of an inch separation, half an inch separation. Anyway, uh, it's all because my dad flushed the dependents down my toilet. And so... Uh, Anyway, there's other people um, on my uh, uh, request to subscribe. Um, Jordan Busby, he's a young kid. He really likes electric rebeer clocks. He knows quite a bit about clocks. Uh, he's still learning. Uh, but I, I'm a big believer in supporting the youth of horology. Um, Frank Schneider. Frank Schneider repairs trumpeter clocks professionally for a living. He's not going to show you how to repair the clocks. And, you know, that's by his choice. But he does show you some really nice uh, clocks on his YouTube channel. Uh, uh, trumpeter FS, um, which stands for Trumpeter Frank Schneider. You got Scotty's Clock World. Scott does a really good job at American clocks. He's still learning cuckoo clocks, but he's getting a lot better with cuckoo clocks. So, uh, and then there's Jody Davis, uh, cuckoo clock artist. Jody Davis' passion is designing and making cuckoo clocks. She does the same thing as the American Cuckoo Clock Company from the late 1800s, early 1900s. She designs the cases, and then she orders movements from Germany, waits from someplace here in the States, and she sells clocks. Uh, check out her YouTube channel, subscribe to her channel, and if you can afford it, purchase a clock from her. Uh, she only... Uh, makes clocks upon order request. Um, she doesn't have the um, the the income as the clock makers over over in Germany to make clocks every day. No, she doesn't have the orders every day. If she had the orders every day, she would come up with a way to make clocks every day. So, uh, anyway, subscribe to her channel. So, um, I think I... Oh, and uh, Matthew Reed. Matthew Reed is the admin for a group on Facebook that is... Um, Um, re repair of pendulum clocks, and he has a couple of uh, YouTube channels um, uh, that has to do with repairing pendulum type clocks. He's over in the United Kingdom, and one of my group experts in my collections group, very smart individual. Um, when COVID was hit uh, hard, uh, they were doing uh, live stream videos. He had a YouTube um, uh, channel set up strictly for COVID for his uh, monthly clock group. So I, I think um, I think I uh, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. Um, I think I got most people. I hope I did. Anyway, leave me some comments, uh, give me a thumbs up, and may, uh, subscribe to my channel, and may God bless each and every one of you.